Recently, we did a video to help explain a little bit about machine gun ownership and clear up some of the uh, misconceptions that are out there. And I hope that you found that helpful. Uh, from the comments that we've received, some of you have, and we were asked so many questions about uh, short barreled rifles versus pistols uh, and, and so many other things that are really hard to understand in the NFA world. Today we're going to do a piece on pistols and help you understand why they're not short barreled rifles even though they appear so similar. In order for something to be classified as a short barreled rifle, to start with, as foolish as this might sound, it has to be a rifle. This is a rifle. It has a stock, and it meets the criteria of short barreled rifle. A short barrel rifle has a barrel that's either less than 16 inches, an overall length, when fully extended, of under 26 inches, or any combination of the two or both. That makes it a short barreled rifle. Let's look at a pistol that might look similar and I'll explain why it's not. This is a pistol. Yes, the barrel is on this particular one, it's 10 and a half inches. It's not, it doesn't meet the 16 inch criteria. It's going to be under 26 inches in length, but the difference is it's not intended to be fired from the shoulder. See, this isn't a stock. This is an arm brace, a stabilizing fin made by Shockwave to assist in shooting it like a pistol should be fired with one hand. This is the original SIG TAC brace. Uh, this is my favorite. My friend Alex designed this several years ago. Uh, this one, your arm slides inside and it really helps hold it nice and secure. But this is the principle that that was designed on and it was clearly made to be fired uh, with one hand or to help somebody that couldn't hold a firearm up traditionally like somebody that's able-bodied. Um, and, and ATF has had absolutely no problem with it. Now there has been, uh, I guess we'll call it some confusion in their rulings. Uh, once upon a time they determined that even though this wasn't intended to be fired from the shoulder, um, if you did, it still wouldn't change what it is. I mean, it's, it's still a pistol. If you pound a nail in with a screwdriver, uh, it doesn't suddenly become a hammer, it's still a screwdriver. You're just not using it the way it was intended. And that was ATF's position once upon a time. If, if you had this pistol and you utilized it, you know, up against your, your shoulder, um, other than as intended, it's still just a pistol. But all kinds of people wrote letters to ATF uh, kind of a poke the bear with a stick scenario, the best I understand it. And finally, ATF came up with a really obscure uh, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary definition of redesign, and, and that was using something other than as intended. And it's always been in the law that if something was redesigned as an NFA firearm, then it's an NFA firearm. So that may be an argument that's not done yet, but for the time being, the position is, you can't put it against your shoulder, although you can absolutely weld it to your cheek. Um, for some reason, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Try to keep up here. I have all I can do to stay on top of this. So AR pistols are really nothing new. Um, they've been around almost as long as ARs themselves have. Um, the aesthetics were never that great on them because of the necessity for this buffer tube. It always looked funny with something hanging out over the rear end. And if the brace does anything, regardless of the way you utilize it, the aesthetics are much better. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look odd or awkward or ridiculous. I mean, it actually kind of looks nice and it's very functional. So a lot of people um, like to have these short barreled firearms. Uh, some of them are for logistical reasons, others are for legal reasons. If you live in a state that, that allows you to have a concealed pistol uh, in a motor vehicle or in the woods or wherever it is you want to carry your pistol, this is still just a pistol under the law where a short barreled rifle would not be covered under that. So there are advantages. Now something that you and I may not think of as important, but it is very important, uh, is that this pistol, if you're gonna make one yourself with all the lower receivers that are on the market these days, um, that it not start life as a rifle. Um, if it's a rifle and you drop a barrel on it, 
that's under 16 inches, regardless of what you have covering the buffer tube, it's a short barreled rifle. So you want to make sure that you either purchase one as a pistol or as a receiver, never having been a rifle, and then you can go ahead and, and assemble it in this configuration. I know that absolutely sounds ridiculous because they're almost undiscernible from one another. They're absolutely the same. Um, but you don't want to get yourself hitched up on some technicality for no reason at all. Just make sure that you start as a pistol or a virgin receiver. So I hope that that helps clarify a little bit um, why you may see two things that look identical, but, but legally they're interpreted as something entirely different. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. If you did, please click like. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. And until next time, have fun and be safe.